Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today I'm going to tell you guys what happened when a hornworm got to my tomato plant and then I'm going to talk about hornworms for a little while because I kind of think they're cool and then make sure you stay tuned until the end to see how I recommend that you deal with hornworms. It's the way that has worked best to keep the hornworms from damaging the rest of my tomato plants. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so here we go. I've got uh, hornworms on my tomato plants. What should I do? Uh, it turns out that the species that uh, I found on my tomato plants is one called Manduca sexta. Um, it actually turns into, like once it's done being a caterpillar and it, it metamorphoses into a, an adult moth, it turns into a moth that's known as the Carolina Sphinx moth or the tobacco hawk moth. And so this is, this is kind of how my, my journey with hornworms started. I'd never encountered hornworms before, but I had this tomato plant and it was doing really well. You can see one, two, three tomatoes just from, from this view alone, lots of, lots of leaves. And then literally you guys, the very next day, it went from looking really nice like this to looking like this. I, I like, I, you know, I exclaimed, I cried, I was so upset. Every single leaf is gone. Every single flower is gone. The only thing that is left is kind of the main stems and half of a tomato right here. And actually a, a hornworm was, you know, eating its way through this last tomato when I found it. Now, the hornworms that I have are not actually tomato hornworms. Even though they're on my tomato plants, they are tobacco hornworms. Now these are in the same species, or excuse me, not the same species, the same genus different species in the same genus. So the genus is Manduca. And so there are tomato hornworms and tomato hornworms have eight V-shaped white markings with no borders and they have dark blue or black horns. What I have looks like this. It's actually Manduca sexta. So this is a tobacco hornworm. It has seven, you can count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white diagonal lines. And you can see this kind of dotted black border on each one. And the horn, instead of being blue or black, is red or reddish brown. So tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms, what's the difference? There's not really a whole lot. I mean, yes, they're different species, but you can treat them both the same way. So no matter which one you have, you can um, take my recommendation to uh, keep these things from damaging your tomato crop. So tomato hornworms and tobacco hornworms, they are both happy to eat tomato plants and tobacco plants. So the, the plant itself does not give you the species. You really have to look at the color of the horn and the markings. So the larval stage, remember larval is the caterpillar stage. It actually has five larval instar stages. These are just different stages that are separated by molting. The final instar is what I found. So I um, probably had several hornworms, to be honest, on that plant. They were very small. Um, they tend to be on the underside of leaves, and so you don't necessarily notice them. But by the time I realized there was a problem, and really it was just the next afternoon, um, I only saw one hornworm, and it was actually in the final instar of those, of those five. And the final instar, you can see how big it is. I mean, that right there is an immature tomato. Uh, and you can see how large this caterpillar is. Uh, and so it, you know, this, this final instar eats 90% of what the other four instars eat altogether. And even though I only saw one, I do wonder if there weren't more because you know, a single adult moth can lay eggs for hundreds of, of larvae. And the fact that I only found one, it really does make me wonder if there weren't more and they had just burrowed down into the soil already by the time I got back out there. And so what did I do? I took that single hornworm that I found and I put it in a terrarium. Um, I did offer it a few more leaves from a, sec a separate tomato plant that I had on the other side of my house where there were no hornworms, uh, but it really didn't seem to be hungry anymore. And I kind of wonder what was going on. I thought, is it dying? Like what's, what's going on? Because it didn't really seem to be pupating, which is forming the pupa. But what I was actually seeing is that the first two bullet points here, the caterpillar seeks a location, burrows underground, that's known as wandering. And it did burrow into the soil of the terrarium. I had to uncover it again to get this picture. <clears throat> and also in this pre-pupal stage, the caterpillar does shrink a little bit, which is probably why I thought it seemed kind of ill. 
but it was fine and it did eventually pupate. So we got this nice pupa. Now these, the species is sometimes grown in research labs for scientific research purposes. And so in like perfect conditions in a lab where they have 17 hours of light and seven hours of dark, kind of mimicking those long, long summer days and short summer nights uh, and like 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 20, 27 degrees Celsius, um, keeping those conditions warm. Then this pupil stage only lasts about 18 days before an adult moth emerges. However, when reared with, um, you know, less light, more dark, um, lower temperatures, the pupae will enter a period known as diapause that can last several months. And this is basically analogous to a pupa staying underground through fall and winter and then emerging when spring comes. And now what is, you know, really too bad as I was working with this tomato plant and I was helping it regrow, you know, August 9th is when I found it just completely stripped bare, no leaves or tomatoes left. I only found the one hornworm. Maybe there were others that I had missed, but it did eventually regrow. And we got several leaves and many new flowers. And then I started finding more hornworms. On September 5th, I found these. These are all in probably larval in star stage three or four. Um, and then two days later, I found even smaller ones. Look at that, look how small they are even compared to the penny. So honestly, these are probably three different batches. That first hornworm was from the first batch um, in early August. And then in early September, I had another batch. And then a few days later, even another batch that had hatched. Uh, and so I peeled all of these off, you know, while wearing my gardening gloves and I was looking at them and studying them and my kids were looking at them. And we noticed that they had some kind of gross traits, specifically with um, urination and pooping. So I'm just going to point out a few. These two yellow arrows right here, you see this liquid that's coming out of the horn? I have no idea what this is. I wondered, you know, I, I would see them emit, you know, three or four kind of quick droplets at a time. Um, and it really wasn't clear to me whether this was like a form of urination or whether this was like a defense mechanism, but I saw, I saw a few of them do it more than once. No idea what's going on there. I tried to Google it, didn't really find anything. So if you know what they're doing, please tell me in the comments. There was also lots and lots of poop. This is called frass. You can see some frass here. You can see this hornworm is in the process of emitting some frass. So that is their feces. Now, how, this is probably why most of you are watching the video, uh, how do I treat this? My preferred method, I did some research, I decided I did not want to use a chemical pesticide. And so I bought a biological insecticide instead. I went to um, Home Depot or Lowe's or like um, some kind of garden or, or like tractor supply store. And uh, I bought something called BT. BT, biological insecticide. The BT is short for Bacillus thuringiensis, and this is actually a bacterium. So this is an insect pathogen, but it's only a pathogenic to basically very specific insects, in this case, the hornworms. So what I did is I bought it as a concentrate. I diluted it, something like a quarter of a teaspoon into you know, a spray bottle of, of water. And then I sprayed it on the leaves. And my tomato plant is doing great. Um, you know, haven't had any more hornworm problems since I sprayed the BT. I am going to do another biology professor video, how does BT insecticide work? So um, once I get that posted, you can check it out. Uh, and, you know, I just wanna say really quick that, you know, this, this bacterium, this Bacillus thuringiensis, it's perfectly harmless to good insects. So it's not gonna hurt your earthworms. It's not gonna hurt your pollinators like bees. Um, it's only going to hurt insects that actually eat the leaves um, because it's got a basically a toxin that only activates once it's inside the caterpillar's gut. So it's only gonna kill something that's actually eating the leaves. Um, and only insects, of course, um, it's perfectly harmless to humans. And so if you have a hormone problem, I recommend that you go get some BT. It will need um, reapplied, you know, once a week or so, uh, maybe more if it's raining a lot, but I've, I definitely think it's the way to go to keep these hornworms at bay. And so this is, this is where we're at for 
that first hornworm, the very first one I found that was in that final NSTAR stage that pupated, it began pupating on August 12th. Today is September 23rd, so it's 42 days later um, and not showing any activity. Um, I'm just keeping it in a pantry now. Once um, spring rolls around, I will pull it out and you know, hopefully we'll get uh, an adult moth. So we'll wait and see with our fingers crossed. That's it for today. I do have some other videos where I have tracked the metamorphosis from that larval caterpillar stage to adult moth for two other kinds of moths. That's the Tursa sphinx moths and the harnessed tiger moth. So if you would like, please check those out. And until next time, thank you for watching Biology Professor.